pictured lead and oak are enclosed in a glass chamber together with a saturated solution of aqueous sodium chloride. This salt solution humidifies the air and the oak. Oak is known to emit more volatile organic compounds at higher relative humidities. The deliquescence crystallization behavior of the sodium chloride crystals in the open tube indicates a possible upper threshold of 76% relative humidity in the chamber over time. Within hours of exposure, the first white corrosion products begin to form. The single salt crystal closest to the chamber atmosphere cyclically absorbs and dissolves water vapour, and it is the first to deliquesce. The saturated salt solution appears to have finally produced a relative humidity of 76%. The equilibrium moisture content of the oak at this relative humidity is reached. Here, the lead before and after exposure is compared. Analysis of the surface with X-ray diffraction following the two-year exposure detected various acetates, oxides and carbonates of lead. The specific compounds are considered in a forthcoming publication. Acetates of lead include some of the compounds produced by vinegar, or acetic acid, and other vapours emitted by oak. Some other timbers and construction materials also emit these air pollutants. Vinegar dissolves the protective lead oxide and carbonate layers, causing more corrosion of the lead metal. The corrosion mechanisms of lead-rich alloys vary, so their effects range from obscuring surface details to provoking structural collapse. There are many types and sources of indoor and outdoor air pollutants, with many other materials being affected. If left unprotected and polluted air remains unventilated or unfiltered, pollutants accumulate and accelerate deterioration. At risk are significant indoor cultural heritage collections, like those found in libraries, churches, art galleries and museums. Cultural heritage collections are irreplaceable and prevention of their deterioration is preferable to restoration. For more information on this demonstration and research on some approaches for conserving indoor heritage collections, see the following link. Thanks for watching.